Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a man is dead following a crash on the city's west side last night. Now police are looking for the person responsible. And law enforcement officials in New Mexico are now closer to figuring out who was to blame for the deadly shooting at a New Mexico movie set. And fall is back. It's chilly out there this morning, especially in parts of the Texas Hill Country. They've got a little more elevation out there. We'll talk to Mike about those morning lows so far. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday. It is October 28th. Thanks for joining us. I'm very excited about the cooler weather. I couldn't wait to go outside today. Steph said earlier it was fun going outside it this morning. It was fun. And I agree. Uh, I had a little uh, fleece vest on, and I actually had the windows cracked yeah. on the way on And this you morning. said you regretted leaving the windows open last night, right? Oh, at home. Yeah, yeah it got a little chilly. Yeah, so if you do open, I mean, it is a little too cool to open the car windows this morning because it is kind of cold out there. But I mean, just open up the, the windows, you know, the air out the house, something. It is great out there. It was beautiful yesterday. Yes, we have chilly conditions this morning and it's about directly overhead. I was walking out the back door this morning and the moon is gorgeous. It is just about at the, the halfway point and uh, it looks like a big old smile out there. 54 degrees here in town. We are about uh, eh, three or so below normal. Got some 40s out in portions of the hill country. Of course, we've got really, really dry air down here at the surface. These dew points are down in the 30s and 40s and then you go upstairs in the atmosphere and we have got bone dry air, even that kind of kind of tan shade. That's really, really dry stuff. That's why we have had gorgeous sunshine and blue skies yesterday. That's where we're going to have gorgeous sunshine and blue skies today. Mold is on the high side from yesterday's reading. Ragweed is low and yeah, it is going to be chilly this morning. I think we're going to be dropping down a few more degrees. We don't have much of a breeze as of right now, so that lets that heavier, cooler air kind of settle down here to the surface. And then nice big warm up throughout the day. We gain anywhere from 25 to 30 degrees, making it up into the mid 70s. Still a little bit on the, the breezy side, not as windy as yesterday, but we're still going to have a decent breeze out there. And the great weather is going to last for a few more days. Take a look ahead to Halloween and then the next front way next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. We will talk to you in just a bit. Right now, the search is on for a driver who hit a man with his car and left him for dead on the city's west side. Jonathan Cotto has been following the story and he joins us now in the studio with all the details. Hey, good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Well, a lot of information here to cover. We checked with the medical examiner overnight, and we are still waiting to learn the name of the man who died. Now, it happened last night just before 10 at the 2000 block of Bandera Road. That's near Cheryl Brook Road. Police tell us the driver of a truck was traveling north on Bandera when he hit the man. The impact threw the man into the opposite lanes. We're told the driver then took off in a truck. Now, officers tell us a driver traveling south hit the man again. Police say that driver of the car did not stop. The man died at the scene, and that's the information we have from Arkansas 70. Now to new revelations in the Alec Baldwin movie set shooting. Authorities now saying a live bullet was in that gun. And this morning we are learning more about the woman who handled the gun on that set. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, new evidence in the Alec Baldwin movie set shooting is revealing potential safety violations. I think there was some complacency on this set, and uh, I think there are some safety issues that need to be addressed by the industry. Authorities confirm a Colt 45 handed to Baldwin was loaded with a live bullet before it went off, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injuring the movie's director, Joel Souza. The facts are clear. Uh, a weapon was handed to uh, Mr. Baldwin. The weapon is functional and fired a live round, killing Miss Hutchins and injuring Mr. Souza. Investigators say assistant director Dave Halls and armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed handled the weapon before Baldwin. And now newly released documents show Halls admitted to investigators that he failed to fully check the gun. A detective described her interview with Halls saying when Hannah showed him the firearm before continuing rehearsal, he could only remember seeing three rounds. He advised he should have checked all of them but didn't and couldn't recall if she spun the drum. Gutierrez-Reed told detectives she checked the dummies and ensured they were not hot rounds. She says when the crew broke for lunch, the guns were secured in a safe, but the ammo was not. Meanwhile, overnight, Alec Baldwin retweeted a New York Times article with the headline reading, gun handed to Alec Baldwin was not thoroughly checked. Prosecutors say how live rounds got into the gun will be a key factor in determining whether charges will be filed. All options are on the table at this point. I'm not, take, I'm not commenting on charges, whether they will be filed or not, or on whom. No one has been ruled out at this point. 
Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Top Democrats say a deal is within reach on President Joe Biden's big domestic bill. Biden heading to Capitol Hill later this morning to urge Democrats to wrap up talks and finalize the social services and climate change bills at the center of his initiative. Biden wants an agreement before he departs later today for global summits overseas. Democrats are eyeing a surtax on those who make more than $10 million in income to help pay for it. American Airlines says a passenger physically assaulted a flight attendant during a flight from New York to Orange County, California late yesterday. American says as a result, that flight was diverted to Denver, where police boarded and apprehended the suspect. American Airlines said in a statement it's outraged about that incident. The company says it is working with authorities to ensure what it calls a proper outcome. American says the passenger will never fly with the airline again. The plane eventually landed in Orange County, California, as initially planned. A Pentagon spokesperson now says more than 86% of active duty U.S. military members are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. However, only 68% of total U.S. military forces are fully vaccinated. That number includes reserve forces and National Guard members. However, 82% of the total force has received at least one dose of vaccine. As of last week, the Navy had fully or partially vaccinated 98% of its active duty force. The Marine Corps had fully or partially vaccinated 92%. The Army had fully or partially vaccinated 91.4% of its force as of roughly two weeks ago. Time now is 436 and it's 56 degrees out there. If you lose your car's key fob, it can cost quite a bit to get a new one. We'll tell you how to save some money. Also next, the Houston Astros fight back to even the World Series against the Braves. We're going to have some highlights next. A great game last night for Houston. Outside with live cam, we are blessed with some beautiful fall weather this morning. Finally feeling a little bit more like late October in South Texas. We'll be back. Good morning, just about 440. Houston Astros turned things up a bit last night in game two of the World Series against the Atlanta Braves. After dropping the first game, Strohs were extra focused on taking care of business. Jose Altuve doubled early, homered late, scored twice as the Strohs whipped the Braves 7-2. Meanwhile, Jose Siri, Martin Maldonado, and Michael Brantley delivered run scoring hits while Houston scored four times in just the second inning. Siri's RBI single and daring base running sparked the rally. With their win last night, the Astros became the first team to win a World Series game in its home ballpark since the L.A. Dodgers in Game 3 against Boston in 2018. Game 3 is tomorrow night in Atlanta. The KSAT 12 Texas Sports Productions Game of the Week features the number one ranked Brennan Bears against the Holmes Huskies. The Bears will be looking to stay the top ranked team in the city and undefeated. The team averages 52 and a half points a game in district competition. They have quarterback Ashton DuBose, who has 1,789 yards and 27 touchdowns in the air, another seven on the ground. Meanwhile, Holmes fighting to make the playoffs with a 5-3 and three overall record. We take it very seriously. we got to take it week by week and don't underestimate any team and be dominant on the field, and that's it. We know they're good, but, like, we know what, what we can play. Like, as a team, we come together and play. Like we'll be able to beat them, but like we just had like we just happened to be, uh, be able to play together. Tonight's game between the Brennan Bears and Holmes Huskies kicks off at 7 p.m. at Gustafson Stadium. And our San Antonio Spurs in Dallas tonight to take on the Mavericks. Tip off from American Airlines Center is set for 7:30 p.m. Go Spurs, go! Yeah, go Spurs, go! Time now 4:41, and it's about in the 50s right now. And replacing your car's key fob can be annoying and costly. We're going to tell you how much you might be able to save. Next, uh, first look at why there's a shortage of 911 workers across the country. The problem causing problems dealing with all sorts of emergencies. And welcome back. It's 444. A shortage of 911 operators is causing a delay in police response across the country. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the struggles leading some 911 calls to ring and ring. I was absolutely terrified. One South Carolina mom says earlier this month when her six-year-old daughter Hadley was having a seizure, she couldn't get through to 911. I remember just screaming. I just, what do I do? I need them to talk me through. 
what to do. 911 officials in her county say in addition to staffing shortages, the calls were not answered, quote, due to a large volume of 911 calls received within a 15 minute period, which overloaded call takers. County officials say dispatchers called back the initial caller within three minutes, but there was no answer and, quote, several other calls were made, finally connecting with a caller 10 minutes after the first call. Coming up at 7 a.m., Kenneth Moten will take you inside a call center struggling to hire enough qualified operators to keep up with emergency calls. Their GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Replacing your car's key fob, no small task. It can cost a lot of money. Here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on how you may be able to save some money. Remember life before key fobs? They're super convenient until you lose one. The cost to replace the latest key fobs can be as much as $400 or more, depending on the brand. Then add another $20 to $130 to program the thing to work with your car. It could add up to $500 in some cases. Before you pay big bucks for a replacement, check your warranty, car insurance, or roadside assistance coverage to see if they cover the cost. If your car is less than five years old, chances are you'll have to go to a dealership that has the expensive equipment required to program a new key fob. If your car is older, you can likely save money by buying an aftermarket key fob online. We found a number of options on Amazon and Walmart, along with online auto parts stores for sometimes $200 less than the dealer. Many less advanced fobs can be laser cut and programmed by a local mechanic or locksmith. But if you're up for the challenge, you can program it yourself. You'll find all the instructions in the owner's manual. Just know that most customer programmable key fobs will require two current working keys in order to program the new one. If you do need a new fob at the dealer, that process is pretty quick, typically less than 30 minutes. And in case you didn't know, there is usually a mechanical key hiding inside the key fob for cars with push button starts. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 56 degrees and you could probably subtract what maybe at eight, 10 degrees, depending on where you are this morning. Yes. Uh, what a treat to wake up to that. Oh, I it's think. great. I mean, and what a difference from yesterday, too, because of course we had the front moving through. We had all the, the storms that just raced on through here and it was so nice yesterday in the afternoon. Same thing today. Same thing tomorrow. Football weather tomorrow night is going to be fantastic. Look at this shot from Del Rio. The sunrise from yesterday. I mean, that just it just gorgeous. And uh, it's going to be a great looking sunrise today. I've got this pointed over to the west and uh, hopefully by the time we're done here and before the sun comes up, we can see the moon starting to set because it's just a, that perfect about halfway point and it's the bottom half. So it looks like a big old smile out there this morning. Lots of clear skies. All right, here's going back to it. it this time yesterday, right before the front moved through, and you know, of course, we had those temperatures drop down about 15 degrees, and the air really dried out. But before it moved on through, we right now have dew point temperatures that are 30 to 35, even close to 40 degrees lower than what it was at this very moment yesterday. We still had the uh, humidity out there, which dew points were up in the 70s, and now it has dropped like a rock. So it's bone dry air, and that's why it's so comfortable. And this is going to remain the situation throughout the rest of today. Notice We've got this northwesterly flow. It's going to be kind of breezy today, not as windy as yesterday. There is a uh, wind advisory north of Austin, so it kind of surrounds our area off to the north and to the east. It does include Victoria. Uh, nothing as far as any advisories here, but it is going to be still on the breezy side today. Tomorrow, another great chilly morning, maybe even down a little bit more. Same thing on Saturday. Dry air all the way in through Friday night. And even going into Saturday morning, Notice how we still keep the dry air around here. However, the wind lines are going to start to shift around. We're not going to get humid over the weekend. We'll probably start to see a bit more later on Sunday and then overnight. But still, for trick-or-treating, it's going to be nice and pleasant out there. And obviously, nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture as of right now. Big, big front. I mean, this storm system, that's the same one that dragged the front on through here, did produce some severe weather over there in the eastern portion of the state yesterday. But then upstream, there's really not much going on around here. 
different computer models have a different solution going into next week. And so this is, one, again, one of the situations where we got to wait to see exactly what is going to happen. But uh, most everybody's in agreement that there is a front coming through by the middle part of next week. The difference is looking at the computer models going into the weekend. Obviously, there's not going to be anything going on. But when the front's going to move on through here. So this is the one that kind of moves things along a little bit quicker. We'll have some clouds around on Monday. This one has some showers on Tuesday and then going into Wednesday and it has the front kind of moving through Tuesday into Wednesday and that's going to cool us down. Then some other solutions keep us or keep the front to maybe about a day later, but it still looks like Everybody's in agreement. All the computer models long range. It does look like we have another fairly decent front coming in here for either the mid to latter portion of next week. Today, just a beautiful day. Enjoy it. Open up the windows, sunny skies, a little bit of a breeze out there. 76 for a high temperature. Just about exactly what we'd expect this time of year and tomorrow more of the same. Still another cool morning. Actually, low temperatures are going to be almost 10 degrees below normal the next few mornings. Beautiful into the weekend. Good trick or treating weather. I think we have a couple of more eh, a couple of more clowns around on Sunday, but I mean, not any big deal. And then more humidity next week and chance of rain Tuesday, Wednesday. I think the front's going to move through sometime about midday, perhaps mid to latter part of the day on Wednesday. You, boy, you guys weren't kidding around though about those winds yesterday. Yes. They, they really got gusty. Yeah, uh, some of the inflatables, I guess maybe people who weren't able to take them down in mm -hmm. time, uh, you know, like the giant ghost. I saw one when I was running just like <laughs> on yeah. the ground, mm -hmm. like, oh, well, there's a victim right there. And, and still breezy today, but like I said, not, not, like, this, not like it was. Okay, thank you, Mike. Right now, 451, about 56 degrees. And coming up next, a look at the premiere of Marvel's latest movie, plus a preview of Tiger King 2. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, six, three, Fireball, zero. Daily four numbers, eight, nine, seven, zero, Fireball, seven. Cash five, nine, 18, 22, 33, 35. And Lotto, Texas, we have eight, 20, 25, 46, 47, 51. Your Powerball numbers, three, six, 26, 35, 51, Powerball 17, Power Play 4. Good luck. Approaching five minutes till Marvel's Eternals gets its premiere, plus Star Trek gets a new animated series. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The Eternals took over London last night for the premiere of the latest Marvel superhero movie. Angelina Jolie plays one of the title characters, a fierce warrior named Thena. She took her kids to the Hollywood premiere last week and says they liked it, but she was nervous. You know, as a mom, you get in a, in a tight gold suit and you jump around and you think I'm either going to completely embarrass my children or maybe, maybe they'll think it's a little cool. So I'm lucky. Eternals will be in theaters November 5th. All of this is really new to me. Out today at season two of Love Life, the HBO Max anthology series about love and dating stars The Good Place's William Jackson Harper. He takes over the season from Anna Kendrick. While on Paramount Plus, it's the debut of the new animated series, Star Trek Prodigy. Nobody's going to take my animals. It's our first look at Tiger King 2, and if the trailer's accurate, get ready for a lot more catfights. The series took the world by storm at the beginning of the pandemic. Adios, Joe. Five new episodes premiere on Netflix November 17th. And a couple of Oscar winners with birthdays today, Julia Roberts turning 54, while Joaquin Phoenix is 47. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. The San Antonio Zoo is set to open up a new attraction this week. The Jaguar Skywalk is set to open tomorrow. The walk, uh, walkway rather, will allow the Jaguars to roam above the exhibit and visitors. Zoo says it's all part of their neotropical areas. You can read about those areas online at ksat.com. Artist rendering looks cool. I can't wait to see them. Yeah, person. it's cool. We've, we've been recently and it's been under construction, so it's going to be cool to go back and check it out. Mike's about to break his neck, nodding that it's awesome. We were shooting something out there. Yeah, oh, so you did see it. Yeah, oh, it's very awesome. cool. Not the Jaguars, but when they right, about the, a week or so ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is cool, isn't it? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yes, we are. 456, about 56 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, President Biden heads to Capitol Hill this morning to urge Democratic lawmakers to finalize his infrastructure bill before he departs for global summits overseas. And pardon me, I have to read this. I'll try not to read it too loud. Alexa is putting a new twist on trick-or-treating just in time for Halloween. That's coming up in Tech by 
lights. If yours activated, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. New clashes among Democrats over President Biden's massive social safety net package. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. What President Biden plans to do later on today before heading overseas, that's coming up. Nice change in temperatures. They've been falling all night long. Mid 50s here in town and they are freezing their pumpkins off out in the Texas <laughs> Hill Country. This morning. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the 28th. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's exciting because it actually feels like fall. And if you haven't seen Steph's uh, earrings yet, these are famous uh, ghosts. Ghosts. Yeah, ready yeah. for Halloween on Sunday. Yes, they are. How are we looking for trick or treating, Mike? It's going to be very pleasant on uh, on Sunday. Temperatures yesterday we stayed in the 70s. We're going to stay 70s uh, today, tomorrow, as well as I think uh, Saturday, and then low 80s on Sunday. Still, the humidity is going to be okay. It's going to start to come back into the picture though late Sunday night, but I think for trick-or-treating it's going to be just a, a really pleasant evening and by the time the sun goes down we're going to be uh, right around the, the upper 70s, upper to mid 70s throughout the uh, evening hours. Anyway, for right now, make sure you grab a jacket. 52 degrees, dew points down to 41. We're five degrees right now below normal, and I think we're continuing, going to continue to uh, cool off a little bit more this morning. 76 for a high temperature today, right about what you would expect. Um, just a, a great day, more dry air out there. The aquifer did go up two tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading, and the allergen still got a lot of mold. That was from some of the rain we had yesterday. The updated count is going to be coming out uh, in a couple of hours or so. All right, some of the temperatures in parts of the hill country. Uh, uh, nothing freezing, but yeah, it is darn chilly out there. 43 degrees in Kerrville, 46 Fredericksburg, Rock Springs a little bit milder, but oh, definitely grab a jacket at that 43 degrees and uh, not much of a breeze as of right now, but we are going to have more uh, more windy conditions, but not as windy as yesterday later on. Uh, clear and chilly this morning and then yeah, breezy. Just a very, very nice day. Open up the windows today. You know, not this morning, though, because it might be a little too chilly to open up the car windows when you drive into work. Nice, uh, like I said, good trick-or-treating weather on Sunday, and then the humidity comes back in late Sunday into next week, and it's going to add some clouds. A couple of showers here and there are going to be possible by midweek, and it looks like we got a front moving through, uh, another pretty good front moving through midweek next week. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything big going on? Hopefully not. No, uh, you know, the weather looking pretty gorgeous right now, Mike, and uh, the roads are also looking pretty gorgeous, I say, so it goes hand in hand today. Right now, 37 at Jones Avenue shows pretty quiet traffic, which is a nice way to start the day. Loop 410 at Marbach. Again, a few folks out there this morning. Traffic has been in light as we start this Thursday morning, getting closer to the weekend. A few folks getting out there at 410 and here at 410 at Starcrest. Again, we have a quiet start in the Alamo City and we are not mad about it here in the traffic lab, uh, but we do want to remind you, make sure you check those vehicles because we do have a little pesky stall out there off Loop 410 southbound right at Marbach. We saw a few of them popping up and clearing out yesterday uh, following that early morning rainfall. It's quite the busy start, so make sure that your vehicles are working properly and make sure you're checking your tire pressure too with that weather change. Uh, let's take a wider look at the map because we do see a lot of green on the screen and that is a good sign there, especially if you're heading out the door in the next few moments. And if you're traveling to San Antonio, these inbound times are green across the board. 25 minutes coming in from I-10 and Bernie. We're looking at 26 from 281 and Bolverde and 26 coming in from 35 and New Braunfels. So perfect day to grab that cup of coffee, turn up the Spotify playlist and enjoy the drive to work or maybe just the early morning destination this morning. We're going to have uh, construction spots to be on the lookout for and gas prices later on this morning. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is recovering after two people tried to break into his house overnight. It happened around 10 last night in the 4800 block of Castle Stream, just north of Gibbs Sprawl Road on the city's northeast side. Officers tell us the man heard banging on the front door, and when he went to open it, two suspects tried to kick in the door. Police say the suspects then started shooting through that door, hitting the victim in the hip. He got away through a side window and was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The suspects got away. President Biden is expected to meet with Democrats on Capitol Hill this morning to try to figure out how to save critical parts of his massive social safety net proposal. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. 
This morning, President Biden expected to make a rare Capitol Hill appearance as he desperately pushes Democrats to carry his domestic priorities over the finish line. Sources telling ABC News federal paid family and medical leave could be out of the package, a potential move to satisfy moderate Democrat Senator Joe Manchin, whose vote Democrats need in the 50-50 Senate in order to pass the bill. To expand social programs when you have trust funds that aren't solvent, they're going insolvent, I can't explain that. It doesn't make sense to me. Progressives so, um, furious. If we go down to zero pay family leave, yeah. you know, that's not OK. That's unjust to the people. Washington Senator Patty Murray telling reporters, quote, we're not going to let one man tell millions of women in this country that they can't have paid leave. But after meeting with both Murray and Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, Manchin confirmed to ABC News he's considering softening his stance. However, the moderate senator is still strongly opposed to Democrats' new proposal to pay for the Build Back Better agenda, saying taxing billionaires on assets like stock market gains is divisive. I don't like it. Uh, I, I don't like the connotation that we're targeting different people. The billionaire's tax proposal was negotiators' way of trying to get another holdout, Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema on board. Without her vote or that of Manchin, Biden's spending package would essentially be dead. Progressives have made it clear they need a deal on that Build Back Better agenda before they will vote on a Senate-passed bipartisan infrastructure deal, focusing on rebuilding the nation's roads, railways and bridges. It's unclear where Democrats go from here, but we're expecting to hear from President Biden later on this morning after his meeting with Democrats and before that major second overseas trip. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Here at home, the community of Kerrville is remembering those killed in a drag racing event this past weekend. Visitation services for one of the children killed were held yesterday to say a final goodbye to eight-year-old Santiago Martinez. People also gathered for a vigil in Kerrville. Last night, they prayed for the three lives lost and the five others who were hurt. Autumn Pender is a mother of three. She was at the event with her three sons who are around the same age as six-year-old Daniel Trujillo Jones and eight-year-old Santiago Martinez, who died during the event on Saturday. I guess it just hits really close to home when you have your own kids. You have to make sure that you tell your kids you love them every single day because they could just be gone. Six others were hospitalized. One of them, 46-year-old Rebecca Cedillo, who passed away yesterday from her injuries. Police continue to investigate it, but have said there are no criminal charges pending in the case. And here in San Antonio, Travis Park is getting an ice rink just in time for the holidays. Workers are setting up different parts before they can bring in the ice. The rink is set to open on November 19th. The event was put on hold last year because of the pandemic, but organizers are ready for it to return. You can buy tickets now, and we have a link for you on our website at kset.com. 507, about 55 degrees. Still ahead, we'll show you Google's new feature that lets miners request the removal of images of themselves from search results. And next, how the city of San Antonio is partnering with a community in one of the poor zip codes in hopes of providing services to those in need. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting in the 50s. What a treat, nice and cool out there for the fans of fall. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 11 minutes past the hour. The city of San Antonio partnering with a local pastor to help bring resources to one of the poorest zip codes here in San Antonio. It's a new resource hub meant to help the homeless. Jonathan Cotto joins us in the studio to tell us more about that and the results of a local poll. Well, in our Barfax case at San Antonio report poll, hundreds of registered voters in San Antonio agree homelessness needs to be addressed, but it's complicated challenge. People voice their opinions on the topics as it relates to housing, employment and mental illness. In one part of the poll, 81 percent of participants said more shelters and health services are needed to help those without a home. The city of San Antonio is partnering with a community in one of the poorest zip codes in hopes to bringing services to those who need them. We're talking about zip code 78207. The area sits just west of downtown. It's also where Harper's Chapel Baptist Church hopes to help those without a home. So it's very important that we have these re resources here to get the people back on their feet, but to be an asset for them. We don't want to enable them. We want to have them to where we're, we're crutching them. We want to give them their identity back. We want to have skilled trades for them, get them back into the workforce, and have them become part of the community, and that's what they want. 
This resource hub will be open every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Harper's Chapel Baptist Church. It's all with help from the city, the University of the Incarnate Word, and other groups like Haven for Hope. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Jonathan. Right now it is 512, about 55 degrees. And still ahead, Apple Music officially launches on the PlayStation 5. And we'll tell you all about Alexa's Halloween feature that offers virtual trick-or-treating. Look at that cool model right there. Nice. and eating at home more often means food odors get trapped in your home's fabrics and released back into the air. So you smell last night's dinner the next morning. For an easy way to keep your whole home smelling fresh, try Febreze Fabric Refresher. Febreze's water-based formula deeply penetrates fabrics to eliminate trapped food odors as it dries. Spray Febreze Fabric Refresher when you clean up after meals to ensure your entire home smells fresh and clean. Try Febreze Fabric Refresher. Brand power helping you buy better. Fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So take Allegra before allergy symptoms take over you. And for kids, try allergist recommended non drowsy children's Allegra. Two loads of snot covered laundry. Only one will be sanitized. Wait, what? Adding Lysol laundry sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. Detergent alone can't. Clean is good, sanitized is better. Just about 516, Google has made it easier for minors and their parents to remove photos from search results. ABC's Andrew Dimmer has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, minors are getting more control of their images on Google. People under 18 years old can now ask the company to eliminate their images from search results, but Google says it will not remove pictures deemed newsworthy or compelling to public interest. Gamers can now enjoy Apple Music on their PlayStation 5. The streaming app officially launched on the console this week, giving subscribers the option of playing the audio as background music while gaming or just playing it on its own. Spotify was already available on the PS5. And finally, Alexa is getting in on the Halloween fun. It starts with users saying, Alexa, enable Halloween routine. Then a preset program can play Halloween sound effects. Users can also ask Alexa to play Halloween movies and games. But don't worry, it's not scary. After all, Alexa doesn't have fangs, only a Bluetooth. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> that was kind of cute. Aww. But we're done saying that word. Yes. So you can go back mm -hmm. to sleep or yeah. whatever you're doing. We will not say that. We will instead check in with Stephen Cavazos, who's keeping his eye on the roadways. Well, if, if you're like me, your uh, Alexa is... <gasps> your microphone off, Stephen? Yeah. Is, it, is it off? Good. I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, wait. No, my mic's off. I'm, I'm so sorry, guys. I have my mic off there for just a moment. Can you guys hear me now? It's coming. We're coming. Hey, guys, sorry about that. Had a, a quick uh, mic, check. mic check there. There you are. All right, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. Loop 410 and Marbach, we're just talking about Alexa again. Uh, make sure that yours is still off this morning, but mine's a little disobedient. Taking a look right now out on the roads, Loop 410 at Starcrest does show that we are getting traffic moving right now at this hour. Thankfully, there's nothing that's going to cause any immediate delays for your early morning commute. I-10 at Crossroads. We're looking here at a shot at 281 South right at Loop 410. We've had a pretty nice morning as we're getting this new day rolling here. It looks like traffic's moving there, though, at 281 one at San Pedro. Uh, so that gives us time to talk about some construction. Good news is we have some stuff wrapping this week. We had some utility work going on over on the northwest side of town. Single lane, uh, single lane closure on the eastbound frontage road from Chase Hill Boulevard up to Lock and Terra Parkway. This is due to some of the utility work that's been going on out there that's led to that single main lane closure. Uh, but that should be wrapping tomorrow. Keep in mind though, we still will see it today from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. So again, make sure that you're planning accordingly or just prepare for some slowdowns. Let's take a jump over here. Here, though, to I-10, we do have some construction that should be wrapping as well. Some striping and barrier operations. That's going to lead to an alternating main lane closure. It's been going on for quite a while now. It's in both directions from Greytown Road to File Road. Uh, but then that should be wrapping tomorrow. It's an overnight deal, so 8.30 in the evening to 5.30 in the morning. If you've been with us on the morning show, you've been able to see that traffic tends to build in those lanes of I-10 due to that construction that's been going on out there. But that's the good news. We'll be seeing that wrap tomorrow. And as we take one last look around town, we do have a great start to match that great weather and we're going to talk gas prices if you're going to be heading to the gas station in the next few minutes guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, do you remember yesterday as we were watching the storms come through on Transkai and we could see those flashes? And oh, yeah. yes. at one point I said, that one was purple. Yeah. 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 Oh. And look at and this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was uh, quite a light show around much of the area yesterday. At least those storms moved through. But that's just a great looking picture. 
Thank you very much for the, uh, the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, this morning, nothing but just cool temperatures. Grab a jacket before you head out the uh, head out the door to work and school. We're at 52 degrees, so we've dropped down a couple of notches from last hour. We'll continue to drop down and then <laughs> subtract 10 up there in Kerrville, down to 42 right now. 47 Comfort, 55 at Randolph. And, of course, we've got this bone-dry air out there, so we've got pretty much all the ingredients to really cool down. We've got uh, clear skies, very dry air, and for right now, light wind, although wind is going to be picking up somewhat later on today. Um, not as breezy as yesterday, or I should say not as windy as yesterday, but uh, still a, a nice little breeze out there. Good fall breeze. 78 yesterday and did make it up into the mid and upper 80s down to the south and to the southwest. Today, about the same temperatures. We're going to stay in the 70s in the kind of northern half of our area and the mid 80s down to the uh, the south and all around the metropolitan area again mid upper 70s close to 80 around here so about at normal normal high right now is 77 here in town so i think we're going to be just about right there as far as the humidity dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere remain very low they will start to though come up now by sunday it's still going to be pleasant as long as we stay below 60 then things are, are fairly pleasant. So even late in the day and going into Sunday evening, I think the humidity stays pleasant enough. It's not going to be as crisp and, and and fallish as it is right now, but we just get a little bit more moving on in here. Then the humidity really starts to come back in as we go on into next week. But then that is going to precede another front and also lead to uh, some rain chances. Now, here's a different computer model than last half hour and still it's got great looking weather. There's nothing going on between now and really Sunday, maybe a couple of extra clouds around here on Sunday. This particular computer model is a little slower in bringing the next front on through here, so we'll have a few more clouds Monday. This one doesn't even have any uh, rain around on Tuesday, and it waits really to Wednesday to bring any rain on in here, and then it would bring the front through on Wednesday into the latter part of the week. So um, overall, yes, a front comes through next week. Exactly when, that's still a wait and see situation. It's either gonna be sometime later on Tuesday, sometime later on Wednesday, but we can at least look forward to another front next week. 70 today at noon, sunny sky, great looking day. Open up the windows. Not this morning, a little too cool for that. 76 for a high temperature today. Breezy conditions, plenty of sunshine. Tomorrow, another fantastic day. Saturday, another fantastic day. Temperature is going to be down in the 40s again. Huge warm ups. We gain about 30 degrees roughly throughout the day. Good indication of a lot of uh, dry air in place. Nice on Halloween. And to start off the month of November, it's going to be a bit milder, a little more humidity, and then some rain by the middle of next week. I'm glad it worked out for Halloween. Yeah. It's great for it because nothing worse than a hot Halloween. Yeah. You know? Walking hey. around trying to trick a treat. Yes. yes right <laughs> I agree. All of that. 522, Candy about melting. 55 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, a look at the first teaser for Lightyear, plus a Carrie Underwood hit reaches a milestone. Lottery numbers this morning pick three, five, six, three, Fireball zero. Daily four, eight, nine, seven, zero, Fireball seven. Cash five, nine, 18, 22, 33, 35. Lotto, Texas, 8, 20, 25, 46, 47, 51. And your Powerball numbers, 3, 6, 26, 35, 51, Powerball 17, Power Play 4. Good luck. He's just been a Space Ranger toy all this time, but now we're getting our first look at the real Buzz Lightyear. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. To infinity and beyond, here's your first look at Lightyear, the origin story of Buzz Lightyear, the hero who inspired the toy in Toy Story. Captain America himself, Chris Evans, voices the legendary Space Ranger. The feature film Lightyear debuts next June. Without a doubt, more challenging. Josh Lucas is taking on a giant primeval shark. Variety reports he's set to star in The Black Demon, the name of the massive megalodon threatening Lucas's character. The survival thriller begins filming in December in the Dominican Republic. One of Carrie Underwood's first hits is still going strong. The Recording Industry Association of America has certified Before He Cheats seven times platinum, the equivalent of seven million copies sold. The album it's on, Underwood's 2005 debut, Some Hearts, was just certified nine times platinum. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
526, about 56 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, health officials are closing in on a decision about Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. Plus, we'll tell you which SUV did the best in a recent crash safety test. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to share with you the origin story of the popular hotel Emma at the Pearl and the story about the three Emmas. Making headlines this morning, details on an updated timeline of when COVID vaccines will be available for younger children. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are actually in the 50s, so it feels like fall out there. Enjoy. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, October 28th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you have a chance to step outside. Uh, if you're working from home, go ahead and step outside anyway, just to enjoy the cooler temperatures. It's really nice out this morning. It's been a moonlit night. Mike is here with more on our Thursday forecast. Yeah, it's just it's wonderful out there this morning. Um, don't necessarily open up the car windows because it's a little too chilly. You can do that later on today. We've got clear skies out there and it's going to be a spectacular sunrise. The moon is about at the, the halfway point and it's probably about directly overhead or hopefully we can see it set in that picture before uh, the sun comes up and it's just like a big bright smile out there enjoying the weather 52 degrees and we've dropped down from last hour we will continue to drop down a couple of more degrees the air is very dry dew points at 41 a whole different story than yesterday it's about 30 degrees lower than what it was prior to that front moving through yesterday wind is out of the northwest at about uh, nine miles per hour so a nice little breeze out there go upstairs in the atmosphere and the water vapor imagery so the darker shade Shade is dry air, really dry air, and the kind of tannish shade is really, really dry air. And this is why we had such beautiful blue skies yesterday. We're going to have just spectacularly beautiful blue skies again today. Mold is on the, the high side. This is from yesterday's reading. The updated count is going to come out in about a, a couple of hours or so. Ragweed is low. 70 at noon, 76 for high. It's still going to be breezy today, not as windy as yesterday. Wind out of the northwest at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Nice thing is, Gorgeous weather lasts. The next couple of mornings are going to be jacket mornings. Won't need it in the afternoon. More sunshine, Halloween forecast, and look ahead to when our next front is going to be moving through, coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. So far, so good. From what we're seeing, Mike, things still look pretty quiet there off of, uh, what, what are we seeing? 151 at Loop 14. I need to get my eyes checked there. I-10 at Frio does show a pretty uh, dark uh, corridor there, but we are keeping our very close eyes on our roadways right now, and especially our trans guide cameras. Oh, as you can see at the map, it is pretty quiet from what we are looking at from this image. However, our friends over at trans guide say that there is a possible 18 wheeler rollover incident happening here off I-35 at FM 482 up toward New Braunfels. We are not seeing anything yet on the trans guide cameras. Again, we are working to confirm that possible situation that's happening, but uh, not seeing any buildup yet just on our map. Uh, and we obviously know 35 is going to be a heavily traveled route a little bit later th or throughout the morning, we should say. So again, this is something that we will continue to watch here in the traffic lab and give you those updates on this possible rollover situation that could be happening here off 35. But nonetheless, make sure that you are driving safe. And if you're coming in from New Braunfels, the good news is it's still pretty green 26 minutes on 35. So that will not be impacting your morning drive, at least at this hour, given that there's not a lot of folks out there. Uh, I 10 from Seguin, pretty green with 29 minutes to San Antonio, 24 and 87 in Lavernia, 28 coming in from Floresville on 37. Let's take one last look at Trans Guide around town, 410 at Marbach. Does show traffic's getting moving there. And if you're heading to the gas station, we'll have those gas prices coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this mor morning, trouble came right through the front door of a man's northeast side home. He told San Antonio police he was shot by someone on the other side of his door. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters where detectives are trying to sort out this case. And Katrina, it sounds like they haven't caught the shooter. No, they haven't. In fact, it sounds like even the victim isn't sure who that person or people were. Now, he told police that he initially thought it was his wife who was knocking on his door after 10 o'clock last night. This was in the 4800 block of Castle Stream near Mid Crown. Before the man could open the door, though, he says two other men tried to kick in his door. Then someone on the other side fired a shot, which went through the door and hit the man in his hip. Police say that victim who's in his 30s jumped out a side window of his home as the shooters ran away. And the last word we had is that that man had been taken to a hospital and was stable. And again, police are still searching for those shooters. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. This morning, health officials closing in on a decision about Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. CNN's Brett Conway has the latest on the process and some answers to some frequently asked questions. We are getting closer and closer to that really important milestone. Closer to a COVID-19 vaccine for kids 5 to 11. Pfizer's vaccine just got the thumbs up on emergency use authorization from the FDA's vaccine advisors. Recommending approval of this vaccine. So what happens next? The FDA now needs to do its deliberation, taking into account the advisory committee's input. And then after that, the CDC's advisory committee will meet. That's on the books for November 2nd. If they give it the go ahead, the CDC is expected to make its official recommendation, possibly with modifications. That means the nation's 28 million kids 5 to 11 could be eligible for their first shot by next week. But some parents are still hesitant. A recent survey shows only about a third of parents of kids in that age group plan to get them vaccinated right away. There are some common questions doctors say they're getting right now, like what about the potential risks of the vaccine? The cumulative benefits outweigh any potential risk. My child already had COVID. Would a vaccine still help? The level of your immunity against reinfection is really profound. It goes way, way up. What about safety moving forward? The safety monitoring of this vaccine will continue. It has actually been quite intense. And health officials say they're ready to roll. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Democrats are expected to drop paid family and medical leave from their economic and climate package. It's one of the key sections of President Biden's proposal, but Democrats are eager to reach a deal with holdout moderate senators. The original plan called for 12 weeks of leave, but that got cut to four in an effort to get the support of Senator Joe Manchin. However, the four-week plan was also rejected, and a further attempt to compromise with Manchin failed as well. Progressives have said they won't vote for the infrastructure bill without a commitment from moderates on the economic and climate package. Former President Donald Trump plans to attend a game four of the World Series in Atlanta on Saturday. The series is now tied at one game apiece after the Astros victory last night. Braves CEO says Donald Trump called the organization and asked to go to a World Series game. The Braves are set to give Trump his own suite. He will not be sitting with any team or MLB officials. The former president attended game five of the 2019 World Series in Washington, D.C. when the Nationals hosted the Astros. New this morning, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are hoping you can help them track down a man involved in a robbery at a convenience store. Jonathan Cotto following this story joined us now in the studio. Jonathan, what can you tell us about this investigation so far? Well, Mark and Steph, police are looking for a man who robbed a three-way corner store. It happened back on September 14th on Fresno Drive. That's near Blanco and I-10. Investigators say the man on your screen walked into the corner store and held the cashier at gunpoint before he took money from the register and took off. We're told that he got away and with some other items as well. Now, if you know the person on your screen or you have any information about the incident, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen at 210-224-STOP. You may be eligible for a reward up to $5,000. Mark Stephanie. 537, about 56 degrees. And as we get towards the end of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, how law enforcement is responding to an increase in cases because of the pandemic. Plus, if you need some extra cash, a major retailer is raising its minimum wage for a second time this year. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting your day in the mid 50s, at least here in the downtown area. A lot colder in the hill country. Uh, definitely grab a jacket. We'll be right back. Just about 541 October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and experts say this year it's especially important to shed light on the issue. ABC's Rena Royce speaks with a survivor who's hoping to inspire others to escape potentially dangerous situations at home. Sarah, who asked that we blur her face and not use her real name, says it all began as a whirlwind romance, but quickly became a matter of life and death. Had you not gotten out when you did, where do you think you would be now? Well, I think that I would be dead or, or permanently injured. Sarah says she started dating a man in 2018 and they got married a year later. Things seemed perfect. 
I thought we were supposed to be together. I, I thought it was that magic. But then she says red flags and his allegedly abusive behavior became more apparent during the 2020 COVID lockdowns. One minute things are going well and and then the next minute, it's a completely different person. Studies show domestic violence jumped 8% in the early stages of the pandemic. And what we found uh, was a consistent overall increase in the U.S. in different cities. On average, domestic violence increased during the lockdown periods. Researchers say isolation, unemployment, stress, financial insecurity, plus alcohol and drug use have all gone up during COVID, potentially elevating the threat of abuse, and that they've persisted even as restrictions have eased. Sarah says it took her a long time to believe she deserved better, but eventually she went to a local shelter for safety. I just found the strength and said, I'm not doing this anymore. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And time now, it's 542 and it's 56 degrees out there. Coming up next, a lot of people drive SUVs, many for their convenience and safety. However, only one came out on top in a recent crash safety test. And welcome back. It's 545. In your morning consumer headlines, an auto insurance nonprofit says smaller SUVs struggled with its new crash safety test. But the 2021 Mazda CX-5 came out on top. This week, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety announced the Mazda SUV was the only one of 20 vehicles to receive a good rating in its test. Nine others earned acceptable, while the Honda HRV and Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross received the worst rating of poor. This year's crash test focused on the tougher side crash. The group says side impacts accounted for 23% of passenger deaths in 2019, but it notes Mazda quote shows that robust protection in a more severe side crash is achievable. Costco raising its hourly wage to $17 an hour. This is the second time this year the retailer has hiked worker pay. In February, the company raised hourly wages to $16 an hour. Costco has about 180,000 U.S. employees, and 90% of them work hourly. The new pay bump is about $2 above Amazon, Target, and other top retailers. Several large companies have increased wages recently as they compete for labor. Costco has one of the lowest turnover rates in the retail industry. Halloween spending expected to reach record-breaking levels. CNN's Jen Sullivan has a closer look at what most of us are spending that money on and how different the spooky celebrations may be this year. <laughs> Halloween is bouncing back. More Americans, about 65%, are planning to celebrate this spooky holiday this year, up from 58% last year. Consumers are back up to pre-pandemic levels when it comes to the number of people celebrating. That's according to the National Retail Federation, which estimates that spending on Halloween-related items will break a record at over $10 billion. That's $2 billion more than last year, despite the ongoing supply chain crisis. <laughs> NRF estimates that the average person will spend around $100 this year for the holiday. Their survey found that most of that is going to purchase costumes, decorations, and of course, candy. Candy is another big area where consumers will be spending, not just to treat themselves, but for all those trick-or-treaters who might be heading out this year who might have had to skip that part of Halloween last year. The NRF survey found 46% of people are planning on dressing up with more saying they'll also get their pets into the Halloween spirit. About one in five of those celebrating Halloween plan to dress up their pet this year, which is the highest we've ever seen. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Again, I kind of had trouble weighing on how much candy to buy this year because last year was kind of hit or miss. We've already talked a little bit about last year. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I think, you know, a lot of people are ready mm -hmm. to get out, but then, you know, it, we're still kind of in the pandemic. Well, kids, if it's if it's low this year, you're getting another four or five pieces per pumpkin, okay? So <laughs> How about an IOU? Right, <laughs> yeah, right. Depending right. on how it goes. Yeah. Well, let's check on traffic right now. Here's Stephen Cavazos. I may be too old for trick-or-treating. I just swing by our executive producer's desk, Joy, and just grab a few candies there. It's oh, a good yeah. spot to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's she's. You don't great. even have to wear a costume there. We well, maybe I will. One, maybe I will. Tomorrow is probably the day to do it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, and today's a great day to head out on the roadways. What we're seeing at Transkai, things have been looking really nice so far. Loop 410 at Marbox shows uh, traffic still very light in some of these areas. Uh, as we can take a look right there at Jackson, it does look like it's picking up. Uh, having 
haven't spotted any big problems on the highways. I uh, do want to bring your attention up towards our friends over here near New Braunfels. Now, we did have an 18 wheeler rollover that was detected in that area. Uh, just talk to our friends at Transguide. Thankfully, this is not on the highway. This is off FM 42 right at Schwab Road. Just again, just off of 35. Uh, we are not seeing any delays just yet. Our friends over there working to get us a shot of the situation that is working. But again, make sure you're driving carefully through that area. But the good news is, is that it's not causing any real big issues at this time. But keep in mind, uh, we are getting closer to 6 a.m. And that's when we start to see more people getting out on the roadways. And uh, this is day two uh, that we do have a rollover situation happening in that area. If you were with us a little bit earlier in the week, we did have an 18 wheeler roll off 35 or rollover on 35, let's should say. And that caused a big, big, big mess. Obviously delays for drivers. So make sure that you're planning accordingly if you're at home. Let's take you down here, though. I 10. We talked about the striping and barriers operation. Now, this is going to be wrapping tomorrow. The reason why we're bringing it up again is because we are seeing a little bit of a buildup right there off I-10 eastbound. Now, keep in mind, this is supposed to be wrapping tomorrow, but uh, that should have been completed by 530 this morning. So uh, hopefully uh, we can get that uh, situation wrapping up and they won't be seeing any delays uh, as we start to get more people out there. Wider scope does show that the morning is still pretty green. It looks like we may have had a crash detected here off 410. We'll take a look at that in just a moment, but really quick, we want to get to these gas prices. I wish we could say we're talking about a dip in gas prices, but that is not what we've been seeing and that is not what we've been talking about at all. Uh, Bear County right now, AAA reports the average gas price is 292 around the state. We're looking at 305 and around the country. We are seeing 339. Now a lot of this is due to an increase in demand, short supply, and of course those crude oil prices, which have just been going up right now. Texas is also seeing a nine cent increase, so we're going to continue to watch these gas prices, but unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to get any relief at the pump anytime soon, but around town looks like the roads show a pretty nice morning, so that's some good news there, guys. And now I was filling up yesterday and I was kind of like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, doesn't look pretty. <laughs> Imagine sitting at a stoplight and look at your rearview mirror and see this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, gas prices, I mean, what, a double of what they were a year ago. Yeah, yeah that's, that's and, spooky enough. And the inflation, grocery prices, ugh, yeah, but <laughs> this is great. I love it. Plus the fact that it's a white truck and the uh, all the, the brush guard in the front there with the skeleton. And of course, why the skeleton didn't cross didn't the road. Didn't cross the road, yeah. It's a great one. By the way, at 630, then our skeleton family has a new uh, KSAT Connect picture to show. So, all right, uh, beautiful morning. It is nice and crisp and cool out there. And it, I don't know if it'll necessarily chill you to the bone. Skeleton bone. <laughs> a for effort. Wait, where, where is it? Here, I got to do a rim shot. Wait. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> it still works. Still works. All right. Still works. Yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, yesterday, as the front was moving on through here, right before the air started to uh, dry out a little bit, and then, you know, we're still, the dew point temperatures right now are 30 to 35 degrees lower than what they were at this point yesterday, but there was the front moving on through right at this time. Of course, that was uh, producing some of those uh, showers and thunderstorms that we had around here, and... Dry air is going to remain in place for the next couple of days. So this beautiful fall weather is going to continue not only today, tomorrow, Saturday, and pretty much on Sunday as well. It's not going to be as crisp on Sunday with as dry of air, but still it's going to be great looking. It's going to be beautiful weather for trick-or-treating. And then late Sunday night, you know, during the afternoon, you'll start to maybe smell a little bit more humidity out there. But late Sunday night and then into the first part of next week, we're going to start to see more humidity come back on in here. And then that's going to then and set the stage for some more rain by the middle part of next week. So uh, through the next couple of days, computer model, nothing going on around here. Um, just lots of sunshine, clear skies. I think we see a few more clouds perhaps Sunday, Monday. Now, Monday into Tuesday, this is the computer model that's a little more, um, say, anxious with the next front and the, uh, the next chance of rain to move on in here. So this has got some rain by Tuesday and then pretty much along a front moving through on Wednesday, and it will keep some rain around then into Thursday. So this one's, like I said, a little more, um, a little more anxious as far as getting that front to move on through here by the middle of next week. Here's what's going on with the upper level winds. Huge low right there up to the north of us. This is what is keeping us in this northern northwesterly flow. This is what you like to see as far as pulling
pulling down some pretty chilly temperatures. Then we start to flatten out, sort of modify a little bit going into the first part of next week, and then we start to see another kind of kink in the upper level of steering winds, and this is going to be the next front right here trying to slide on through, and it looks like it's going to be a fairly significant front once again. All right, today we'll make it up to 70 at noon, so chilly start, nice big warm up throughout the morning, plenty of sunshine out there, and a high temperature up to 76. Still going to be breezy today with wind out of the north and northwest about uh, say 15 20 miles per hour not as windy as yesterday and then beautiful sunshine great fall weather through the weekend thank you mike 554 about 56 degrees and let's take a look at your winning lot of numbers we have pick three five six three fireball zero daily four eight nine seven zero fireball seven and here are your cash five numbers 9 18 22 33 35 lotto texas 8 20 25 46 47 51 and powerball 3 6 26 35 51 powerball 17 power play 4. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we are tracking severe weather, plus what's going on in Washington. The latest from there as President Biden prepares for a high stakes foreign trip. Democrats are scrambling to craft a compromise on Biden's social investment agenda. The latest on if he has a deal or not. That plus much more coming up on GMA. See you guys soon. Did you miss game two of the World Series? Well, the Astros have made the series a little more interesting. We have a recap coming up in the next half hour. And San Antonio police still looking for a driver who they say hit a man with his truck on the west side and then took off. The man who was hit later died. We'll have more on that. Trans Guide, we've got at least one incident working right now. Steven is busy tracking that. He'll get you updated. Coming at the top of the hour, you're watching GMSA. A man is suffering from a gunshot wound after two men tried to break into his northeast side home. We're going to tell you how it happened. Things are all tied up. Astros take game two of the World Series against the Braves. We'll get you ready for game three. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It feels like fall, y'all. <laughs> Great day. It's 55 degrees right now. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It would appear Mother Nature got our gift of a new calendar. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, October 28th. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope you've had a chance to enjoy the cool temperatures. Maybe you went out to take the dog out this morning or something. We sent it via Amazon Prime, so I know it yeah. got there, the delivery of our calendar. She probably turned and said, oh, it is October. Yeah, and, and obviously is not paying attention to it. So it was a whole different story than what it was yesterday. You know, earlier in the week, we had those warm mornings and everything. Now we're on the below normal side. High temperatures are going to be what you would expect, and it's going to last for the next couple of days, which is fantastic news. Good looking weather to uh, finish out the entire month of October, including trick or treat weather. We have got some clear skies out there. No glow of the uh, morning sunrise yet. It's not going to be coming up for about another Oh gosh, hour and a half, almost hour and uh, 45 minutes. Temperatures are all in the 50s. We've dropped down one more degree here in town. 55 Kelly, 57 right now at Randolph. And I think we just continue to drop down a couple of more notches because we got this really uh, dry air out there. Clear skies, a little bit of a breeze. Mold is on the high side from yesterday's count. Ragweed's low. The updated reading is going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. And uh, 49 degrees. So again, I think we dropped down a couple of more notches and then we warm up nicely. Temperatures are going to be just jumping up throughout the rest of the morning. We'll make it up to right around 70 at noon and then top off today. Mid upper 70s again, what you would expect this time of year. Plenty of sunshine, dry air still going to be kind of breezy today. We'll have northwesterly wind, not as windy as yesterday, but still 15, 20 miles per hour. Open up the windows later on this afternoon. A couple of more very chilly mornings. Matter of fact, might be seeing even some of the coldest temperatures so far this season coming up. We'll take a closer look at the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, and it's been, dare I say, pretty quiet so far. Quiet on TransGuide cameras. You're right, Mike, but uh, we do have a situation we are tracking right now. Weather may be nice, and so are the roads, but there are a few things to obviously be on the lookout for this morning. Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Traffic picking up from this shot at TransGuide. Loop 410 
10 at Starcrest looks like pretty nice, uh, nice way to start the morning when you see the roads pretty clear. Uh, however, as I mentioned, there is one situation that we are watching closely here, which is a rollover situation and possibly involving an 18 wheeler off FM 42 at Schwab Road just off of I 35, not on the highway, but talking to our friends at trans guy. They are working to get us a shot of this particular situation that's happening, uh, but right now it's still very early on to where we're not seeing any buildup. Mentioned this a little bit earlier, and if you're just waking up with us, if you remember, there was an 18 wheeler that caused a spill out on 35 a few days ago, so led to a mess of problems. Thankfully, this is not on the highway, but make sure that you're planning accordingly, especially with morning rush just a few minutes away. But for a lot of folks, they're getting out there this morning. Wider scope does show that the overall map in the Alamo City and our outlying areas do look pretty good right now. Pretty green on the screen. Love to start the morning saying that. And as we take a look at these inbound times, green across the board as well. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton on 37 with 28 minutes to downtown San Antonio. 17 on Lytle from 35. And we are looking at just 19 minutes coming in from Highway 90 and Castroville. So some good news there and love to talk about that. 37 at Jones Avenue, 410 at Marbuck. Uh, got a alert of a few stalls that are out there. We'll keep those in mind and give you all the updates coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. New this morning, a man who police say was pretending to be other people stole several vehicles from two dealerships and a car rental facility. Jonathan Cotto is staying on top of this story and he joins us in the studio with the details. And Jonathan, what can you tell us about the arrest? Mark and Stephanie, the suspect who is now facing charges is being linked to the theft of several vehicles for cases dating back to the beginning of the year. Here's a look at 30 year old Christopher Larson. According to an arrest affidavit, investigators say this was an ongoing series of cases. Investigators say Larson was using false identification to get these vehicles at several dealerships. In one case back in April, he was seen on surveillance video at one of those car lots. That's when he was recognized for the other cases. The offenses in these cases ranging from $30,000 to $150,000. Now his bond is set at $45,000. He faces a charge of theft and false statements. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Jonathan. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is recovering after two people tried to break into his home overnight. Happened around 10 last night, the 4800 block of Castle Stream, just north of Gibbs Sprawl Road on the northeast side. SAPD says the man heard banging on the front door, and when he went to open it, two suspects tried to kick the door open. Police say the suspects then started shooting through the door, hitting the victim in the hip. He escaped through a side window and was taken to a hospital. He is expected to be okay. Officers are still looking for the suspects. In your other morning headlines, top Democrats say a deal is within reach on President Biden's big domestic bill, but tempers have flared as a paid family leave proposal fell out and a billionaire's plan ended up scrapped. Biden is heading to Capitol Hill this morning to urge Democrats to wrap up talks and finalize social services and climate change bills at the center of his domestic initiative. The president wants an agreement before he departs later today for global summits overseas. Democrats are eyeing a surtax on those who make more than 10 million a year in income to help pay for it. More than 86% of active duty U.S. military members are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. That's according to a Pentagon spokesman. But only 68% of total U.S. military forces are fully vaccinated. That total number includes reserve forces and National Guard members. However, 82% of the total force has received at least one dose of the vaccine. As of last week, the Navy had fully or partially vaccinated 98% of its active duty force. The Marine Corps had fully or partially vaccinated 92% as well. The Army had fully or partially vaccinated 91.4% of its force as roughly two weeks ago. Now to new revelations in the Alec Baldwin movie set shooting. Authorities now saying a live round was in that gun. And this morning we are learning more about the woman who handled the gun on that set. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, new evidence in the Alec Baldwin movie set shooting is revealing potential safety violations. I think there was some complacency on this set, and uh, I think there are some safety issues that need to be addressed by the industry. Authorities confirm a Colt 45 handed to Baldwin was loaded with a live bullet before it went off, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injuring the movie's director, Joel Souza. The facts are clear. Uh, a weapon was handed to uh, Mr. Baldwin. The weapon is functional and fired a live round. 
killing Ms. Hutchins and injuring Mr. Souza. Investigators say Assistant Director Dave Halls and Armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed handled the weapon before Baldwin. And now newly released documents show Halls admitted to investigators that he failed to fully check the gun. A detective described her interview with Halls saying when Hannah showed him the firearm before continuing rehearsal, he could only remember seeing three rounds. He advised he should have checked all of them but didn't and couldn't recall if she spun the drum. Gutierrez-Reed told detectives she checked the dummies and ensured they were not hot rounds. She says when the crew broke for lunch, the guns were secured in a safe, but the ammo was not. Meanwhile, overnight, Alec Baldwin retweeted a New York Times article with the headline reading, gun handed to Alec Baldwin was not thoroughly checked. Prosecutors say how live rounds got into the gun will be a key factor in determining whether charges will be filed. All options are on the table at this point. I'm not, take, I'm not commenting on charges, whether they will be filed or not, or on whom. No one has been ruled out at this point. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. In other news, despite worries about tight supply chains and some items running out, the National Retail Federation now says this could be the biggest holiday shopping season ever. It's forecasting a sales jump as much as 10 and a half percent, nearly $860 billion coming up in the month of November and December. And Starbucks is getting ready to pay its workers more. The company now says employees with at least two years on the job will get raises of up to 5% starting in late January. Those with at least five years could get 10% more. McDonald's has also been raising pay, trying to hang on to workers and says that is going to show up in their menu prices. Wages at the fast food place up at least 10% this year. And now Mickey D says prices will be up around 6% this year compared to last year. Time right now is 6.09, about 55 degrees. And Halloween is just around the corner and a little later on GMSA. We're going to tell you how Amazon's new features will help celebrate the occasion. And you've probably been to Hotel Emma at the Pearl, but do you know its origin story? Just ahead, we're going to tell you about that story and the story of the three Emmas. We'll get to those stories in a few minutes, but first we want to talk about the Astros bounce back in game two of the World Series. Stros have tied it up with Atlanta at one game apiece, mostly thanks to a productive second inning for Houston's offense with four runs last night, the final for Minute Maid. Astros win it seven to two. So the Stros will try to make the series, uh, uh, take the series lead rather over Atlanta in game three. Today is a travel day for both teams. The World Series picks up back tomorrow night at seven in Atlanta. And our Spurs are in Dallas tonight to take on the Mavericks. Tip off from the American Airlines Center set for 7.30. Go Spurs, go. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. That cold front came in yesterday. And this morning, it is alive and well. We're at 55 degrees right now. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 613. The Hotel Emma at the Pearl has gotten rave reviews from guests and riders since its grand reopening a few years ago. But one thing many don't know about is how the Hotel Emma got its name. Well, for that answer, you have to hear the story of Emma, Emma, and Emma. All three women all linked to the man who ran the Pearl Brewery more than a century ago. GMSA producer Rosalind Jimenez has the details in today's South Texas Crime Story. The historic Pearl Brewery is both a tourist destination and a place where locals hang out. It's filled with stores, restaurants, and the world-renowned Hotel Emma. The hotel is named after Emma Kohler, who ran the brewery for nearly 20 years, but not many know about the story of how Emma took over. According to the backstory on the hotel's website, Emma's husband, Otto Kohler, was the president of the Pearl in its heyday in the early 20th century. The couple lived a happy life together until she was severely injured in a car crash in 1910. This led Otto to hire a young, attractive live-in nurse also named Emma, nicknamed Emmy. However, it wasn't long after that he had an affair with her. Later, Emmy introduced Otto to her tall, blonde friend who was also a nurse named Emma. Otto set the two of them up in a little house on Hunstock Avenue near I-37 and I-10 and started having affairs with both women. Then, on November 12, 1914, Otto went to visit the nurses. They started arguing and the tall, blonde Emma shot him dead. All she had to tell police at the time was, quote, I'm sorry, but I had to kill him. After being charged with murder, the third Emma skipped town, traveled to Europe to nurse World War I casualties, then returned in 1918 to stand trial. The all-male jury found her not guilty. Despite all the drama, Emma Kohler took over the brewery, guiding the company through prohibition. While other breweries were shutting down, Emma kept her entire workforce employed by converting operations to dry cleaning, auto repair, and even ice cream. 
And though the two nurses named Emma have now faded into history, Emma Kohler is remembered by the beautiful hotel that now carries her name, the Hotel Emma. Rosalind Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Didn't know a lot of that. Yeah, it's a fun story to tell visitors. Uh, I, I knew about it just because we I did something with the, the 300, you know, back when we were celebrating that. So it's kind of fun to tell people when they come into town, hey, did you know about Some twists and turns yeah. in there for sure. <laughs> Let's see how things are going on the roads at 615. Stephen? Another Emma is my niece, Emma, Emma Blake. Okay, just wanted to throw that out there since we were just throwing a lot of Emmas. Uh, taking a look at Trans Guide, shots of, uh, of, of where we're looking at. So pretty good, uh, sh smooth commute right now. 410 at Marbach. Traffic still very light in that area. So again, perfect time to head out the door, grab that cup of coffee, get your day going, though. It is picking up there off Jackson Keller. Uh, do want to bring your attention, though. We do have that rollover incident happening off FM 42 right at Schwab Road up toward New Braunfels. This is just off of 35. Thankfully, it is not causing any issues right now on the highways, but keep that in mind that we're not sure exactly how long this is going to take to clear out. Our friends at Transguide still working to get us that shot over there so we can see how that situation is developing. But right now, it doesn't look like it's impacting the southbound or the northbound lanes of 35. So that's some good news there, especially if you're traveling through that corridor, maybe down to the San Antonio area or maybe up to Austin a little bit later. Uh, let's go ahead and take a jump, though. We do have a stalled vehicle that was detected right over here off US 281 southbound right at Jones Maltzberger. That's led to a little bit of a closure there. We need to take a look at Transguide a little closer uh, to find exactly to find out exactly how that is going to be impacting traffic now that more people are getting out there this morning taking a wider scope of things I did just see this crash pop up off of uh, I 35 as well so we'll take a look at that a little bit later on during the newscast see how that's going to be impacting that morning drive but for now things are looking good on trans guide and I'm happy to say it's a nice uh, change from yesterday when we saw a lot of situations out on the roadways sure did yeah, that's a good change and also that. a change uh, kids will be wearing maybe a sweatshirt or a jacket out there <laughs> oh yeah so and yeah. you know and it's one of those days too where it's it's not, you know, too hot in the afternoon, so yeah, you, you still don't need a jacket when we're up in the uh, mid upper 70s, but oh goodness gracious, it is nice outside this morning and uh, yeah, you definitely will need your uh, your jacket. Is my uh, my little bus not going to drive this morning? Nope, unfortunately. Um, Let's take a look at this. This was yesterday as the sun was coming up and oh boy, it was nice once we get those clouds cleared on out. And well, when the sun comes up this morning, we're not going to have any clouds out there. It's just going to be gorgeous. All right, temperatures coming up. We're in the uh, low 50s right now. Tomorrow forecasting 47, 46 Saturday morning. So far this year, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we got down to 49 and 48 on the uh, 18th and 17th respectively. And we're going to be getting cooler than that forecast temperatures and that would be the coolest since going back into April as well as into March. April 21st we were at 47 degrees and then cooler before that was uh, going back a month uh, to March 21st we got down to 45 degrees. So yeah, it'll be the coolest since way back late last spring and then it warms up nicely. 51 right now, 44 Kerrville, 47 in comfort and basically low to mid 50s elsewhere. The, of course, the humidity is very, very low compared to what it was at this time yesterday. And that front move through brought in the dry air. That's what allows temperatures to drop down as well as the cooler air in place and the clear skies. And it's going to stay this way throughout the rest of the weekend going into the weekend. So it's going to be a fantastic weekend. And that's what's going to allow for those chilly temperatures. Then the humidity starts to work its way back up a little bit throughout the day on Sunday. It's still going to be very comfortable on Sunday. Great trick or treating weather, but you just kind of notice it won't be quite as crisp. And then we get into first part of the week and yeah, we are going to have some more humidity around here, but that is going to help out with uh, some rain chances. We are kind of on the leading edge of a pretty, pretty chilly air mass up to the north. Obviously, it's a higher elevations, but it's freezing right now. Casper 33 at uh, Cut Bank, and it's this northwesterly flow that's pulling in all of these these colder temperatures around here with that big, big storm system right there in the central portion of the country. This will stay in place for the next couple of days, keeping us on the chilly side. Then it starts to sort of flatten out just a little bit going into the latter part of the weekend, and that's why temperatures will get slightly milder going into the first part of next week. And then we've got a couple of more, uh, another big front, which is going to be moving on through here. Timing of this is still a little iffy right now, whether it's Wednesday and or Thursday. But it definitely will be coming through as it looks right now uh, by the at least mid latter portion of next week. So 70 degrees today at noon, sunny skies.
gorgeous, gorgeous day and a little bit on the breezy side, though, not as windy as yesterday. 76 and yeah, just get outside and enjoy it. Open up the windows today. Tomorrow, another fantastic day and again, some pretty chilly mornings. Coldest since way back last spring. Plenty of sunshine around here. I think maybe a couple of more clouds here and there over the weekend and uh, good trick or treating weather chance of rain next week. And you said another picture from Oscar and his neighbors, the Denote families coming up. Yes. Looking forward to it. I have next half hour. You're gonna, yes, you're gonna like yet. this one. Can you and, give us and another great pun. I don't know what's better. The pictures or the puns. I mean, because the puns are pretty good. He's coming yeah. up. Can you give so. us a hint? Uh, skeletons. Okay. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great hint. Thank you, Mike. You're 620. Welcome. That's what I get for asking, right? Exactly. 621, about 55 degrees. And Google wants to give kids more control on its platform. We're going to explain right after the break. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide our skin, not us. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. And for kids ages six and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Hide my skin, not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In this morning's GMA First Look, the struggles leading some 911 calls to ring and ring. I was absolutely terrified. One South Carolina mom says earlier this month when her six-year-old daughter Hadley was having a seizure, she couldn't get through to 911. I remember just screaming. I just, what do I do? I need them to talk me through what to do. 911 officials in her county say in addition to staffing shortages, the calls were not answered, quote, due to a large volume of 911 calls received within a 15 minute period, which overloaded call takers. County officials say dispatchers called back the initial caller within three minutes, but there was no answer and, quote, several other calls were made, finally connecting with a caller 10 minutes after the first call. Coming up at 7 a.m., Kenneth Moten will take you inside a call center struggling to hire enough qualified operators to keep yeah, up with emergency with calls. The Dear GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. In today's tech news, minors are getting more control of their images on Google. People under 18 can now ask the company to eliminate their images from search results, but Google says it will not remove pictures deemed newsworthy or compelling to the pub public interest. Amazon's Alexa is getting in on the Halloween fun. It starts with users saying, Alexa, enable Halloween routine. Then a preset program can play Halloween sound effects. Users can also ask Alexa to play Halloween movies and games. If you have Alexa at your house, bet you're awake now. Yeah, we apologize. Time now, 625 and 55 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA this morning, a robbery suspect on the loose in San Antonio. Police want your help finding him. Details just ahead. And a quick look at the Rose at Transkai. That is probably not the picture. We're having some technical. A man hit by a truck driver and left for dead. Police still looking for that driver. We're going to tell you what we know. Outside with live cam. What a novel idea. Jacket weather at the end of October. It's happening right now, especially areas northwest of San Antonio. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday morning. It is October 28th. Thanks for joining us. How exciting this nice cold weather. And when that cold front came in yesterday, it was really windy and it was funny going outside for a jog and seeing all the inflatables just <laughs> <laughs> on the ground. It was a parade of sorts. Yeah, yeah it's not going to be as windy today, but it's still going to have a decent breeze out there. It's pretty good this morning as far as, you know, not overly windy, but don't roll down the windows.
I mean, later on today, yes, but not in the car because hey, it's cold out there. Oh, we're going to have a beautiful sunrise. Got a lot of clear skies as of right now and uh, still at 51 degrees. I think we'll drop down another couple of notches before it's all said and done. The air is very dry with a dew point all the way down to 40 and uh, a slight breeze out of the northwest. So even though the formulas don't come into play when temperatures are above 50, Still a little bit of a nip out there when you have that slight breeze. And uh, Uvalde's at 46, 52 Carrizo Springs, Del Rio 56 and 49 right now in Hondo. Mold is on the high side. The updated count is going to come out in about a, say, half hour, hour or so. And uh, yeah, just clear, chilly, or even on the cold side. However, uh, whatever your tolerance is, but it feels great out there. Sunny, breezy, just a very, very nice day today with a lot of blue skies. And that's going to continue on tomorrow. Uh, Saturday as well. Good trick or treating weather. We'll start to see the humidity. It'll, it'll start to begin its return on Sunday, but still it's going to be pleasant. Although overnight Sunday then into Monday we'll uh, notice it. So it's not going to be anywhere near as uh, as nice Monday morning. And then we do have a front moving through by sometime midweek. It's still a little bit iffy as of right now, but that will be coming through touching off a couple of showers and then uh, come getting us some, some cooler air by the latter part of next week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authorities, Stephen Cavazos. I dare I say it's been a very quiet morning. Yeah, you can you can say that. Okay, uh, yeah, jinx things. Yeah, I don't think so, Mike. Not just yet. Uh, 35 at Shirts Parkway. We have a very interesting shot here from Transguide. Uh, we've been talking about uh, 18 wheeler rollover that's happened off of 35, so it's not causing any issues. I am working with our friends over there to try to find out if that is still the case. If we are still seeing that situation out there, but let's take you to the map uh, right now because you can see it is detected off FM 482 right at Schwab, uh, just off of 35 there. We are not seeing any buildup of the traffic on any of the highways, so that's good news there. And uh, but again, whenever we have a situation like that, make sure that you're driving with caution throughout the morning. We're going to continue to watch that shot very closely. Let's take a jump down here to 281, though. Something very interesting going on here. We do have a stalled vehicle that was detected off 281 southbound off Jones Maltzberger Road, but checking the text dot website, uh, they detected some sort of pedestrians on the highway on the northbound lanes. We're going to watch that very closely, see what's going on out there off 281, but make sure that you're driving carefully through that area area, especially if there could be pedestrians or even just so stalled vehicles. We've been seeing a lot of those coming in and out of the area. Another one just popped up here off Loop 1604 southbound right at Wiseman Boulevard. As I mentioned a little bit earlier in the newscast, when the weather changes, make sure you check those tire pressures and of course make sure everything else is working properly before you get your morning started. But thankfully the good news is we are still seeing some grain if you're traveling to San Antonio though, but we do have a minor slowdown coming in from 281 with 28 minutes from Bolverde. Uh, same with Bolverde, but this is pretty normal. 24 minutes right now on 87. Let's bring it back to Transguide here. Again, this is a shot that they're able to provide us right now. Very tough to make out what's going on out there, but we'll continue to watch things closely. Mark and Stephanie. San Antonio police actively searching a northwest side neighborhood not far from Ingham Park Mall for a would-be burglar. They say that person tried to break into a bank ATM near Loop 410 and Ingram Road. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, what can you tell us? Well, it looks like uh, the thief gave up for one reason or another, but police here are not giving up. They're still searching for that person. Also processing this machine for any evidence they can find. Let me give you a better look. I'll step out of the way so you can see. It looks like uh, that person may have gotten into the machine, but in terms of getting anything from the inside, it doesn't look possible. It looks like the person ran off, perhaps because someone had called the police. Uh, we don't know. I haven't had a chance to really get all the details from police, but you can still see uh, the machine is covered in mud. And that looks like that was the culprit for this burglar, that the person uh, drove that truck onto what turned out to be a pretty muddy service, surface, couldn't get any traction. Uh, police say that that truck is believed to be stolen uh, from uh, somewhere out in the county. And uh, so they are still searching for the person who was behind the wheel, the chain. They had a chain attached to the truck that's still wrapped around the machine and also still attached to the truck, which is still running. So this just happened within the last half hour. Police again processing the machine, uh, looking for any evidence they can to try to figure out who this was. And also uh, they had their helicopter up when they were searching the neighborhood for that person who ran off this morning. Reporting live from the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, San Antonio police looking for a driver who hit a man with his car and left him for dead. It happened on the west side last night just before 10 at Bandera and Cheryl Brook. 
Police say a truck driver was heading north on Bandera when he hit the 58 year old man. Officers say that driver took off. Then police say another driver of a car hit the man again. That driver did stay to try and help. The man was pronounced dead on the scene. The search is on for the person suspected of robbing a corner store. It happened back on September 14th on Fresno Drive near Blanco and I-10. That's where investigators say the man on your screen walked into the three-way corner store and held the cashier at gunpoint before he took money from the register and took off. If you know who this person could be or if you have any information about the incident, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. A jury has convicted 73 of Louis Benevento murdering his wife. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Louis took the stand yesterday. All along, he claimed self-defense. He testified his wife pointed a gun at him while he was trying to leave their home and that he opened fire. Then she just kind of popped up from the other side of her Prius with the gun like this. I'm going to talk to you about something. Prosecutors used a neighbor's surveillance video to contradict some of Benevento's testimony. They also claim what he said to the jury isn't what he told police the night of the shooting. His trial lasted only three days. And now to a problem impacting a lot of families here in San Antonio and across the country, the rise in the cost of child care. The Biden administration is proposing something called the American Families Plan, allowing low and middle income families the opportunity to afford better child care. This comes as child care providers are dealing with the costs. Jonathan Cotto joins us now to break it all down. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Well, Mark and Stephanie, according to Child Care Aware of America, a nonprofit organization, the cost of care here in Texas is almost as much as, listen to this, a tuition at a four year college. That's just under $10,000 for infant care. And get this, Texas couples living in poverty line pay 72% of their income on child care. And it's not just a problem for the parents paying for the care. Child care teachers are some of the lowest paid workers. One local child care provider says the cost of running a business includes insurance, supplies, toys, and now more cleaning supplies due to COVID. But the big chunk goes to payroll. As for the administration's proposal, it's unclear how that money will be distributed down to the child care, child care centers and their employees. Now, in Texas, some estimates show 30 percent of kids are growing up in a single parent home. The good news, there are programs to help struggling families right now. Coming up tonight on the Night Beat, we'll tell you about an effort to aim at increasing the labor force in the service industry by providing free child care. It's a program not many people know about but is available right now. Look for more on that story tonight on the Night Beat at 10. Mark Steph. Thank you, Jonathan. A group of migrants moving through Mexico continues to grow. It's now at about 4,000 people. That group tried to get asylum in southern Mexico, but the system is backlogged. So they continue to move north and people keep joining them. Many in that group are children. A member of the Center for Human Dignity says about 1,200 people in the group are under seven years old. And health officials are closing in on a decision about a vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. Pfizer's vaccine has been given the thumbs up on emergency use authorization from the FDA's vaccine advisors. If the FDA agrees, the CDC's advisors will meet to make their recommendation. It's on the books for November 2nd. If they give it the go ahead, the CDC expected to make an official recommendation, possibly with some modifications. That means the nation's 28 million children, 5 to 11, could be eligible for their first shot by next week. But some parents are still hesitant. A recent survey shows only about a third of parents of kids in that age group plan to get them vaccinated right away. But doctors say the cumulative benefits outweigh any potential risk. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and experts say this year it's especially important to shed light on the issue with studies showing an increase in domestic violence during the COVID-19 pandemic. ABC's Rena Roy spoke of the survivor who's hoping to inspire others in escaping potentially dangerous situations at home. Sarah, who asked that we blur her face and not use her real name, says it all began as a whirlwind romance, but quickly became a matter of life and death. Sarah says she started dating a man in 2018 and they got married a year later. Things seemed perfect. But then she says red flags and his allegedly abusive behavior became more apparent during the 2020 COVID lockdowns. One minute things are going well and and then the next minute, it's a completely different person. Studies show domestic violence jumped 8% in the early stages of the pandemic. What we found uh, was a consistent overall increase 
in the U.S. in different cities, on average, domestic violence increased during the lockdown periods. For Sarah, she says the verbal, financial and physical abuse became harder to ignore. He was much more angrier and more abusive and it was definitely scary. He choked me here enough that if he didn't stop, I was going to die. Researchers say isolation, unemployment, stress, financial insecurity, plus alcohol and drug use have all gone up during COVID, potentially elevating the threat of abuse, and that they've persisted even as restrictions have eased. The after and ill effects of this pandemic will be going on and on and on. Researchers say on average, more than 10 million adults across the country experience domestic violence every year, but there is help out there. Trained professionals at victim assistance organizations can help with things like housing, food insecurity, mental and physical health, and coming up with safety plans. When they come to our emergency shelter, they see that it's a warm environment, it's welcoming. Sarah says it took her a long time to believe she deserved better, but eventually she went to a local shelter for safety. She filed for divorce, but her husband recently passed away. She's hoping others will hear her story and also take the steps to protect themselves. If this is happening to you, I strongly recommend and urge you to save yourself, tell someone else, trust someone else, and get out of it. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And the time now, it's 641 and it's about 55 degrees out there. Just ahead on GMSA, look, a couple of artists about to do big things at the upcoming Day of the Dead Parade. We'll show you how their art is making a lasting impact on the community. And welcome back at 644. This year's Day of the Dead River Parade is right around the corner. Two popular San Antonio artists are once again taking the task of painting a calavera on a barge from start to finish during the parade. RJ Marquez tells us more about Los Otros. Chances are you've seen the work of Sheik Vega and Nick Soup of Los Otros murals all across the city of San Antonio. They have done hundreds of paintings and murals across the Alamo City and around the country. Everything from these amazing artworks when it comes to the San Antonio Spurs to other colorful designs that you will see across the streets of San Antonio. After meeting in the late 90s, Sheik and Nick officially teamed up to create Los Otros in 2014. It's a great feeling to see our, our work uh, across the city of San Antonio in hopes that it can inspire. He's a great person to hang out with and a good friend of mine for a long time. The pair are born and raised in South Texas in San Antonio. They understand the city's culture and reflect that in their art. The contrast of his work and my work melding together that, that really created a staple. And down the lines it just became us. It's, I don't even think it was something where we made like a conscious decision like, hey, we're going to form something. It just suddenly, hey, we are something. And they want to make sure San Antonio continues to cultivate the next generation of street artists. If we could educate and keep, educate and inform and build a platform for these young artists to launch off of successfully to build a career and have a career in the city that they love, then we don't lose them. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, everyone. We are keeping a very close eye on the roadways right now. We have a shot at 281 at Divine Road. If you were just with us a few moments ago, we did talk about a situation happening out here. Uh, we are not seeing anything from this shot. Traffic actually moving through 281. Uh, but earlier, the textile website listed that there was some pedestrian on the highway there off 281 just north of Bassey. But there was also a stalled vehicle detected there right at Jones Maltzberger in those southbound lanes. It does look like a Texot Hero truck assist assisted that driver. And you just see our map cleared that out. So hopefully that means there we have seen some resolution in that particular area, but other spots we are still seeing some problems here. We have a saw at Loop 1604 southbound right at Wiseman Boulevard, not causing any issues, but make sure to check those vehicles. As I mentioned, those tire pressures are you're going to want to check that before you get out there. It looks like a crash may have just been detected in that area as well. So we'll watch that pretty closely, but let's take a jump up here to 35. We're doing a lot of jumping this morning, so bear with us. A rollover at FM 42 at Schwab Road has still uh, is still being detected off of 35. This is an 18 Wheeler. Our friends at Transguide worked to get us a shot there. Unfortunately, we're not able to get a very close look, but they do tell me that this is still very active, so make sure that you're planning accordingly. Thankfully, not impacting the highways at this hour. Let's take a wider look at the map. We do have a crash that was detected here off 35 at Ritterman. I'll take a closer look at that, but it looks like we're seeing a buildup in those southbound lanes, but right now, the shots at Transguide does show that morning rush is here. We're seeing a lot of folks out there already. We'll continue to watch these roads closely, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. We love As it. As promised, Look at him. Took my ghoul friend to a skeleton <laughs> puppet theater. There's the little guy. Is the, the fish new? 
No, nope. I've, no, uh, he's he's around? made okay. an appearance before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the the dog right there. It was a bare bones production. Uh -huh. Wow. Again, <laughs> the puns are are as good as the picture. I think so. Thank you very much. Keep it coming. And then again, what do we expect after Halloween, though? I know it's going to be sad if we don't get a picture. The bars. You've raised the bar or the bone, whichever <laughs> it may be. So, all right. Uh, not really start. Man, maybe starting to see a little bit of a glow of the uh, the early morning sunrise. 51 degrees here in town. 49 hello. 44 in Kerrville, and I don't think I have shown this graphic yet this year. Oh, it, there was a wind chill just a couple of moments ago. It was down to 41 degrees in Kerrville, and uh, there's slight breeze out there, so not really enough to uh, create any any bit of a, a wind chill. But it does feel a little little nippier out there with that slight breeze. Satellite picture, nothing is going on right now. We're not going to be seeing anything. Big big storm system, central part of the country. That's what pulled the front on through here and then on the back side of it. This is what is bringing in the beautiful weather that we see right now and it is going to uh, continue on for well the next few days. So it's, it's a great stretch of weather. It's going to warm up very quickly throughout the morning hours. We'll make it up to 70 today at noon. Plenty of sunshine, a bit of a breeze, not as windy as yesterday, but just enough out there and you know still open up the windows just oh nice and refreshing when you step outside as you said, Stephanie, it kind of makes you, you happy yeah. on a day like this. This morning, yeah. first thing this morning, I was like, yay, it's here. Outside. <laughs> and you're going to be very happy the next couple of days if you uh, like this kind of weather because temperatures are going to be some of the, the coolest readings we've seen around here uh, since all the way back to last April and even March down to 47 tomorrow, 46 Saturday morning, getting up into the uh, mid and upper 70s. Looks good for trick or treat weather on Sunday. We will be up to 82 degrees, so just a little bit on the warm side of things, but still the humidity is going to be okay, although it will come back in overnight Sunday. And then uh, first part of the week, more clouds and some rain chances by the middle of the week. Another front comes through the middle of next week. Okay. But nice on Halloween. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good Halloween. Thank you, Mike. 650, about 55 degrees. What happens when you see someone litter on Texas roads? There's a new app that lets you tattle on them. I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA. How you can report them and what text dot will send them. Sarah did not litter. That was just for the promo shoot. Uh, taking a look outside with live cam. We're in the mid 50s right now. Nice and cool outside. We'll be right back. It has been an unsuccessful morning for a would-be bank machine burglar. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The person who tried to break into this ATM apparently went away empty-handed. Police, though, trying to get their hands on any evidence they can find. They've also been searching this northwest side neighborhood for that person who ran off, left the ATM wide open, and left the truck still running there with a chain attached. Now, all of this happened a little bit after 6 o'clock this morning. Uh, police say that uh, they got a call to this bank here, which is off of 410 near Ingram. They found this truck just the way it is, the door wide open, the engine still running, and a chain wrapped around that ATM. Now, it looks like whoever was trying to perhaps pull that machine off its base with the truck ran into a problem because there's a whole lot of mud and it's splattered everywhere. Uh, they looks like they weren't able to get much traction in that mud with the truck and decided to run away instead of uh, continuing to try to break into this machine. We haven't talked to police yet, so we don't know what, if anything, they got from the inside of the machine, but it does appear that they at least got the front of it open. Reporting from the Northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, this is not a great time to see a situation like this happening here off 35 at Ritterman. We do have a crash to talk about. We brought this up a little bit earlier. This is in the southbound lanes of 35. It looks like we, has S we have SAFD along with our San Antonio police working to clear this scene. Not exactly sure what we're seeing, but hopefully the drivers and anyone involved in this crash is OK. But bringing you right to the map, something not looking OK is that traffic building up in those southbound lanes of Ritterman. Our 35, I should say, right at Ritterman. We'll continue to watch that closely. We do have that stall still over here off Loop 1604 southbound at 
Wiseman in that rollover will continue to keep a close eye on there, Mike. We are starting to see the glow of the sunrise this morning. Oh, my goodness gracious. It is beautiful out there. 54 right now, so we did go up a couple of notches here in town. 44 Kerrville, 49 Balverde, as well as Helotus. And throughout the day, we're going to see temperatures just jump up this morning, up to 70 at noon, 76 high temperature, and still kind of breezy today. Then the next couple of days, very chilly in the morning, nice in the afternoon, good for trick-or-treating, and maybe some rain on the front middle of next week. Very nice. nice. Thank you, Mike. Everybody, thanks for watching. We appreciate you starting your day here on GMSA. Enjoy the beautiful weather, and we'll see you back here at 9.